Today I realized I know somebody who claims to be in the bloodline of Christ, to be part of a family that discovered America a hundred years before Columbus, knows where the Holy Grail is buried, and sadly came to a very sticky end. Stay tuned and I'll tell you that story. So when I first graduated, I worked for the BBC and became a film editor. One of the jobs I really enjoyed was working for the News and Current Affairs Department at a BBC studio called Lime Grove in West London. And the BBC produced The Money Programme, Newsnight, The Late Show, and a show that I worked on for many years called Panorama. Now, for American viewers, Panorama is a bit like Frontline. It's a weekly current affairs program that deals with current topics. The editing team's job was to put together 50-minute films for 8 o'clock on a Monday night from reports from all around the world. But the program also had a studio. And you will remember if you're British presenters like Robin Day, who would interview the great and the good talking about British transport, education, government policies and things like that. And the studio needed guests. The only way to get the guests to the studio was by cab. BBC had a transport department, but they would just hire a black cab and you never really could guarantee that your guests would arrive on time. So along came this guy. Niven Sinclair. He started a small minicab chauffeur service with high-end cars picking up premium guests for the current affairs department. I booked Niven cars all the time. They were guaranteed to arrive. They were always clean and safe, but expensive. In fact, Niven earned a fortune. He became so-called preferential supplier to the BBC, doing their basic transport needs for years. He built an empire in the transport industry. Eventually, when I left the BBC, I'd heard that Niven now had helicopters and was doing so well. And I've always supported him. I mean, he was a third-party supplier to the BBC. He saw a niche market and he did a good service. Time went by and I'd long forgotten Niven cars until I started seeing Niven Sinclair on TV. But what is the real history behind the Da Vinci Code? Now, the truth behind the clues painted into Leonardo Da Vinci's masterpiece. Go beyond the Da Vinci Code. Now, we've all read Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, about how Mary Magdalene and the Sinclair family are, in fact, all descendants on this long bloodline of Christ. And the Holy Grail is buried in Scotland under Rosalind Chapel. OK, we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So it turned out that Niven Sinclair claimed he was a direct descendant of Christ in this Dan Brown world of Mary Magdalene. And he pops up regularly on those kind of Da Vinci Code films. So what was your reaction when you found out that you were being called one of the descendants of Jesus and Mary Magdalene? That didn't uh, affect me in any way uh, whatsoever. You don't feel I, at all? I, I certainly haven't been going around looking for a second-hand halo, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Your family married into Jesus's bloodline. Well, by the time it gets to me, it'll be very, very, very diluted. So let's explore some of his claims. 
in the Sinclair family have a family home just outside of Edinburgh in a small village called Roslyn, where they built this, this amazing chapel. Have a look. It's beautifully carved and became extremely famous after the Da Vinci Code book was written. I've visited the place a couple of times and it is truly amazing. The carvings are extraordinary. And one of the claims is up in the ceiling are carved cobs of corn. The chapel far predates any explorers going to Americas long before Christopher Columbus. How did the corn, which isn't native to Europe, get carved into the chapel at Roslyn. So Niven, having made a fortune at the BBC, starts researching the Sinclair family and claims that they discovered North America before Columbus and builds this. And also, using his newfound wealth, he invests in rare books for the Sinclair Library, which is supported by Prince Charles. Sadly, Niven Sinclair has recently died, but what has come out after his death is truly shocking. Niven's creation story when you met him was amazing. He claimed he was a leading cashew nut farmer. Snakes were named after him. He was a military bigwig and he came to London with a suit and a hundred pounds in his pocket and set up his business. It turns out, extremely sadly, that Niven is a convicted paedophile. In the 1960s and 70s, Niven was caught bothering young boys, some held at gunpoint, where he was convicted and sentenced to many years in jail very sad and completely changes what I think about Niven. Newspapers of course picked up on the paedophile story and linked it with the Jimmy Savile scandal. Jimmy Savile was a presenter at the BBC who was a paedophile and uh, died in shame. The BBC were heavily criticised for keeping on employing Savile when possibly some members of their senior management knew that he was a child molester. I have no idea if that's true and in the Niven Sinclair case, remember Niven was a third party contractor for the BBC and I don't really think the BBC had any way of knowing everything about who they employ as a subcontractor. So that's my story for today. An interesting chap to have personally known, somebody who claimed to be in the bloodline of Christ, discovered North America before Christopher Columbus and turns out to be a paedophile. The truth is out there.